Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dallin with Daltron Printing. I'm going to do a relatively high level overview of getting Clipper to run on an Android phone. Um, I'm doing this because, as everyone roughly knows, as most people in the tech space know, uh, Raspberry Pis are a little hard to get a hold of right now. I have an extra one, but I, I have a separate um, project I want to use it for, though I probably won't get to it for a while. I just didn't want to use it, and I have a couple of old smartphones laying around. The old smartphones I have are mostly Pixel 4a's, I think. So I'm going. I used that, and it took me oh, way too long to get it working. I have never set up Clipper before this. I don't know really anything about Linux. This is kind of my first time using it. I haven't rooted a phone or an Android phone in years, and that's one of the things you'll need. Um, but in the time that I, I started doing this, and to when I finally completed it there were a lot of updates in it. So a lot, of, a lot of people working on it and they made it a lot easier for me and everybody else who doesn't know too much about it to get started in doing it. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda show you the resources that I had and what I found online and how well it worked as well as an easier way to do it um, that I found near the end of what I, uh, near the end of getting everything running. So. Currently, the printer that I had Clipper running on has a physical issue that I'm trying to get with the uh, the manufacturer to give me because I, I only had the printer for almost like not even three months and the printer had issues, so I, I can't really show Clipper running in any good capacity, which sucks. But it is running on just an old smartphone, Pixel 4a. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll need a couple of different things, and I'll go over them when we go to my computer. So let's do that. Okay, so here we have the Clipper on Android GitHub by uh, Guy Feng or something. They have this one. Somebody was kind enough to go ahead and uh, create an English version of the tutorial, which is super nice. You can follow this and mostly ignore uh, what I say. Cause again, this is just an overview. If anyone wants me to go through uh, getting Clipper to install on a brand new phone, then just let me know in the comments. I think I have an extra phone uh, kicking around. I would need to take one of my printers and convert it to Clipper, which I might want to do just anyway. But if you want to watch a video tutorial, they have one here. But be warned, it is not in English. If you don't if you don't understand the language, then that would be kind of tough. So definitely uh, read through all of this. It'll tell you how what they set it up on like they had a Xiaomi phone 16 gigs of RAM or uh, 16 gigs of ROM and 2 gigs of RAM and stuff like that um, I ran it on stock Android so they have that OS uh, M-O-K-E-E -E. I was trying it on Lineage OS and I believe I believe you could have I could have done it but I was trying it uh, before this was uh, before I was aware of this. So I think this came out in November, so I was trying it before November 16th. And um, yeah, so this made it a lot easier, a lot easier to follow this, but they do say that you need to have your phone rooted and everything like that. If you don't have it rooted or don't know what that is, just look up your phone, look up how to root that specific phone. It's really not too hard at all. And anyone, anyone can do it. You know, I, I don't think the version of Android necessarily matters all that much. Um, but it's possible you, it could conflict, so you might need to maybe downgrade your phone to a lower version. I think Android 13 is out right now, so it might be possible that you have to downgrade. Um, once you're rooted and you have uh, root permissions and stuff like that, you can continue on. Um, uh, yeah, Clipper, Clipper. So they say right here that this isn't recommended for beginners. I disagree. I think this is actually something really good for someone who may be a little bit more than beginner. Even if you are a beginner though, you'll have to learn a lot by doing this. So it'll teach you so much that you'll be less of a beginner by the end of it. And it's possible that you're too beginner at all t for computers and you don't know where to go. Uh, in that case, I, I, I really don't know how to help you. I can't exactly I'm, I'm not an expert on Lin, uh, Linux or Clipper, so I, I can't help you, but 
The tutorial assumes that your phone is rooted and Clipper form firmware has been splashed onto your SD card and the motherboard and stuff like that. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you're gonna have to find your specific printer online and find a Clipper um, tutorial on how to make the config file. Now, one thing that tripped me up because I knew absolutely nothing about Clipper coming into it is that I didn't know how to get this before getting Clipper, and you don't. You get Clipper uh, running on your uh, on your phone, or you or not Clipper, but you get Linux running on your computer or on your phone or whatever, and you use the scripts that they give you. I think it's uh, I, I don't know exactly where it, where it is here, but it's like Kawaii or something like that, and it'll kind of help you through the process of creating a bin file for your specific printer but be warned you should really look up how to do it um, because it you gotta set up a lot of settings that are specific to your printer's motherboard and everything like that that's why I can't really do a overview on how to do this I could of course do a, a, a tutorial on doing it on my phone and my printer so if that's something you'd like to see please let me know down in the comments it does say you are required to have these um, these these programs. Now, you do need term. Uh, well, install when needed. I'm pretty sure you can get away with not using Termex, but it might be useful and it's free, so it doesn't matter. Um, this kernel editor is also free, and yeah, it says it's open all CPU cores recommended. I don't think that's super important. I did it just because I think it just makes your it opens all the CPU cores, so it makes your phone faster. I assume not 100% sure. Linux deploy, obviously you need that. You don't technically need this X server. This is only if you want to use your phone as a screen. However, uh, you might as well. It it's really costs you nothing to get. It's you know obviously it's free and everything like that, so it doesn't matter. Linux deploy you're going to need because that's how you're going to run Linux on this phone, on your phone. Uh, X shell and X FTP, you don't need these. If you go here, uh, they're paid softwares, I believe, and... So I don't know if you can just download it or what. Yeah, see, I, you could do a 30-day evaluation and all this stuff. Um, yeah, you, you don't need these. There are other programs that will get you by, and in fact, you can get by, I believe, with just Terminal. That's what I did. I did not pay for these or use these two programs in the slightest. Um, but yeah, then you just follow these instructions. Um, install X server, install kernel editor or whatever. Uh, yeah, kernel aud auditor. Anyway, um, install Linux deploy. You're gonna want to follow these pretty pretty spot on, though I don't think it's as important as they make it out. Um, as far as like what distribution you use and stuff like that, though, you, especially first first times, you you might as well just stick to exactly what they're doing. Um, it, it'll just make things easier down the line because there are some things in here that are going to be important. I don't know exactly which ones. I'm not an expert on this stuff. Obviously, you're going to want to know the architecture of your phone CPU. Um, I think mine was ARM64, so that's what I used. And then I made sure that all these were the same as this. Um, again, if, if you're not using your phone as a screen, so like say if you had a had a computer that you were always just going to go to the web web interface, then you wouldn't need to do all this stuff, though I don't know why you wouldn't just set it up just in case. I plan on getting my phone set up and then having my phone record, though that's a, a whole other bag of worms. Once you get this running, it really is actually pretty cool that you, then you have you know Linux running on your computer. And right, they say, after logging into the Debian with SSH, run the following command. If you're lo to log into a phone um, or to any Linux thing with SSH, you might have to look it up exactly how to do it, but on like Windows or something, if you pull up um, terminal or command prompt or whatever you're used to, then you do SSH, uh, and then for right for this one you do print 3D at you know 192 or whatever your um, whatever your phone's IP address is. Once it's running, of course, because you activate it, you should have activated SSH right here. You see, you, in, you enabled SSH right here, and then you SSH into your phone right here. That makes it so that you can control everything from here rather than trying to do it from your phone. Now you can use, uh, let's see, where is it? Termux, 
to SSH into this um, Linux from your phone. So then you can type it all out on your phone. You don't even need your computer at this point, though you would have needed a computer to root your phone anyway. So if you have a computer, it should be should be a lot easier to do here. And then you can type and you know run through the different commands on command prompt. And then yeah, run run these things. You are going to need this. I think I accidentally skipped it my first go around, and that sucked. Or it didn't suck super bad. I just had to go and rerun it. But you do need that. Uh, let's see, apt update. You're just going to update vim. I think that's just so you can get stuff. I can't remember exactly what vim is. Then you want to go to home directory. Now this is the um, program that I was talking about, or the uh, script you go to here this is just a uh, you know update helper or installation and update helper for clipper and moonraker mainsail octoprint whatever all these um, things that make clipper actually easier to use and this makes it so much easier to install you can i believe install clipper without this or you you can and fluid or mainsail or whatever uh, one you want and moonraker but just figure out a way to get uh Kaya, I don't know how you pronounce that, but figure out a way to get that thing running on here. It's worth it. Um, so let's see. So yeah, this is, I think, for a different yeah, domestic script. So use this one if you're uh, English, US, and stuff. I think for other countries or other language, I'm not sure exactly what that one is, but I'm assuming that that's what that is. Uh, when you run this, it runs uh, the script, and it'll pull up like a installation script where you can choose... Uh, what to install. It says need to install Clipper, Moonraker, and Fluid because it doesn't support mainsail. I believe I tried running it through with mainsail as well just to kind of mess around with it and there you know it doesn't obviously it, it's a <clears throat> it's a script that they ran and they ran it for fluid. Fluid and mainsail aren't that much different. If you want mainsail, I mean either wait for somebody to figure out a way to get it running on here because I'm sure eventually it will happen, but fluid's really you know, perfectly fine as far as I'm aware. Uh, again, I haven't messed with it too much either, but before it was last month sometime when you tried to install this, it would kind of crash every time you installed one thing. And But I think it would have been okay to just rerun it and keep going, but it scared me and I didn't know what to do. So uh, fortunately now there's been some updates with, uh, with this quiet software or whatever, or script. And now it will, it won't crash every time, or at least it didn't for me. It would just tell me everything installed correctly, but the service isn't running. Um, because, you know, they explain right here, can't be started, system is not compatible with Clipper, family bucket service startup method, or something like that. So, but don't worry about it. You know, they say right here, don't worry about it, and they're right. Keep going on. Um, now, I can't remember exactly how I, because they, they use the paid software to enter that command line, enter the following path. If you just go to that spot and then copy those files out, I set it up um, in Linux Deploy. You can set it up to where you can um, where you can view your SD card if you're logged in as root. And what you would do there is, in here, when you SSH, you would actually just do root at whatever you know IP address you have. And you, I believe, have to put a password on there. So, it, so what you do before you SSH into it is, you look up exactly how to set a root password. So you're 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 logged in as print 3D, and then there's a certain Linux command that you actually set the root password. That way, when you SSH into root, you just type in that password that you used, and you can log in as root. That way, you can come into here take these files, because uh, they're saying make a backup of them, and copy them out onto like your SD card or something like that. Then they say to, uh, you know, do all this stuff, but then they say, or just save the trouble and paste this. That's all I did, paste that right in. It just downloads those files and puts them where you want them. It just puts them right in there. Um, and then, let's see, go back to Debian. Yeah, go to here, and then run these things. This is to get the uh, configure Clipper family script, and then that's running it. And then here's where I got stumped for a very long time, is that trying to get everything to run on my computer or on my um, phone through Linux and everything like that 
I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to pull up a web interface and just say, hey, you're not connected, but everything else works fine, or if it wasn't even supposed to do that much. And I ran into a lot of problems uh, kind of doing both. I, I've, I've tried this tons of different ways from using Linux Deploy to using Termux itself to using um, a couple other programs. I, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I would like to try and mess with those ones because I think those ones were easier to use in a lot of different ways than Linux Deploy as less setup and stuff like that. So if I can, I might, if there's interest in it, I might play around with those and see if I can't get those running and make a tutorial on that because I think it would be a lot easier than setting up um, all these all these things. But not by much. I mean, it's still, you're still setting up Linux on, a, on an Android phone. After that, you should, um, you should have already made and you should have uh, Clipper running on your printer. You need Clipper running on your printer to find out how to actually connect your phone to the printer. You'll, you'll need like a, a breakout thing, so a USB-C to USB, uh, and preferably one that has like pass-through charging. So on my on my setup, I have a power cord coming in to charge the phone, and then a USB going out from that to to connect to the printer. However depending on your OS, you may or may not have access to your USB ports and stuff on your uh, through Linux. And that's why they're saying to use a specific uh, OS. Now, to get around this, what you can do is you can jump into, um, you can jump into Octoprint, or Octo4a. You can download that program. It's, a, it's an awesome little app that makes it so you can run uh, Octoprint right from your phone. Um, tons of people have already done uh, videos on it and stuff like that. It, it's really great, but it has a custom solution for detecting USB ports and stuff like that. You can piggyback off of that. So when they say re-execute this after finding out what um, what USB connection you have, that's all well and good, but you need to go and edit this to actually look for the correct USB connection. Because if you're running on... Um, Octoprint, let's see, I think they talk about it in this, and this is um, this is another GitHub um, script and everything like that to get this running, but then you know they, say, they link to this easier version, which is this guy, which it is the easiest version. But in here, they talk about how you can install Octoprint, or Octo4a, and do all this stuff to find out what your, um, what, they what they're linking your um, USB to, so it'll be something like this point you know dev point pts zero. Now, if you aren't using that, if you don't need to, if your print if your phone can actually detect what your printer is, it should look like something like that or something like that. But if it is like this, it might and probably will change every time you restart your phone. It'll go from a zero to a one or a two or something like that. So when you get into your um, configuration, you'll need to account for that. You need to go in here, and it's really not hard. Um, I think, let me see if I can just pull up this script itself. Yeah. So in here, and again, I, I'm, I have a programming background, so this isn't too confusing for me, though I've never messed with this uh, Linux code, but it's still just kind of use, you know, intuition and find out where, uh, where things need to be. So like, I was saying on this one, it would look like this or this. Well, if that's what they're looking for, then look for that and then change it to this. So in here, TTY ACM zero, we'll change that to PTS forward slash zero or whatever yours is. Change this to zero or something like that. Um, that's all I did. I went and found all the places where this shows up. You know, one, two, three, four. So five, five different places where it shows up. And I just changed that straight in uh, there and then I, I ran it again. Of course you have to watch out in case you restart your phone from zero to one. You'll have to figure that out. After that, it really should, you know, restart your phone, everything boots up, follow these instructions. Everything should come up pretty easily. There are plenty of pitfalls and annoying things to look out for. So here's an even simpler way of doing it. Clipper support, if you install Octo4a, you can actually get Clipper running straight from Octo4a. Now you'll have to find somewhere else to create a, or make a, a dot bin file for your printer to um, flash its firmware to be running Clipper firmware, firmware and stuff. 
but you can actually do that with all this and then just not bother with connecting it through your, or not bother with most of this. Just get uh, Quaya or whatever it's called running this, this program. And it has a thing to make a .bin file for your printer. Once you get that running, getting Octo 4A on your phone is a breeze. You just download it. It should just detect your printer automatically. So you'll follow these instructions though, setting up 4A, make sure you got install plugin, uh, extra plugins and stuff like that. Um, you'll run it, run this after uh, going to your phone's IP at that login and stuff after checking this. It's, it's really super simple. Um, yeah, there's a few people talking about different things in the comments, but this worked for me. This worked great. I tested this and I, I got this working too, but I tested this as well and this worked great. So this is definitely the easier route to go if you're wanting to just play around with Clipper and then if you want Fluid or Clipper Screen, then you're gonna wanna run this guy because if you want your phone running Clipper Screen, then you're gonna have to use this one. Like if you go to this video tutorial, this is Clipper Screen right here. This where they have all the options to control the printer. That's Clipper Screen. If you want that running on your phone, you're going to need to run this guy. But you don't need it. You can do Octo 4A, and you can uh, control your control Octo Print from here. Or if if you get uh, this running and you don't want to do Clipper Screen, you can just log into Fluid from your phone and then run it like that. You don't need Clipper Screen at all. So that's a super high level overview. I know even at a high level overview, there's still a lot of things going through and I really am dreading making a full tutorial, but I might make that regardless of whether or not anyone wants it in the comments, just because I, I think I think there is absolutely use in documenting this in, in English. You know, that guy, this person made, I'm sure, a, a great video on how to do it in whatever language they use, but from an English standpoint, you know, whoever made this gets it. It's a lot easier to you know, go through a language that you're familiar with. I was trying to originally follow a a whole different dude that was, uh, I think, South Korean and trying to follow his tutorial, and it was really hard. I, I got far further than I expected myself to, but I, it still stumped me in a lot of ways. So this is, again, just super basic overview. If you want me to go further or install on a, a whole separate phone and go through everything that I had to do, all the changes I had to make, to the uh, files and everything, then let me know in the comments. You know, like, subscribe, and yeah, remember who you are, make good choices. Thank you very much for watching.